So once again, welcoming you all to today's section. Today we're going to look at the question solving of the IES-8. So let's look at IES-8 into detail. Great. So first, IES-8 talks about accounting policies, accounting policies, command change in accounting estimate accounting estimate and errors prior period errors prior period errors that is the is8 good basically now, in summary, IAS8 have four sections. That if you understand these four sections, that is all. If you sleep, sleep well. Any question that come under IAS8 to be around that, those sections. So I'll just provide a summary of those sections, the key areas, before we go straight to the questions. Great. Now, the sections deal. But IS8 are four. Number one, we should know the selection of accounting policy. Selection of what? Of accounting policy. Good. So how do entities select accounting policy? That's the first item. How do the entity select accounting policy? Are you free to select any policy of your choice? Is there any rule, is there any principle guiding the selection of the accounting policy? Do you have to select according to certain threshold? And then what is accounting policy itself? Now, accounting policy refers to specific rules, principles, assumptions, practice, that we use to prepare the financial statement or that are put in place for the preparation of the financial statement. That is an accounting policy. Policy is a specific rule, specific principle. It's a specific assumption that we use or we have to adhere to or that we practice to prepare the financial statement. That is all, that's the definition. Now, the second section is, on what basis do you select your accounting policy? Now, according to IS8, it states that the policy that you select for the organization, it must be appropriate. So that's the criteria. Make sure that you select what appropriate accounting policy. So not just any policy at all, the accounting, policy that we have selected for ourselves, it must be appropriate. First, if you look at the basis, if you look at the accounting policy itself, we said that there are specific rules that we normally adhere to, or we normally put in place or applied by an entity preparing and presenting financial statements. So basically that is it. So if I should go over again, we said that they are just specific policies, assumptions, principles, practices applied by an entity in preparing and presenting of what financial statement, that is all. So what is accounting policy? There are specific rules, specific assumptions, and it's practice that are applied by an entity. So accounting policies are meant to be followed or applied. Good. That is it. <laughs> now, we reach. On what basis do you select the accounting policy? 
ISH requires an entity to select and apply an appropriate accounting policy, which comply with what the IFRSs, and also to ensure that the financial statement provide information that is what relevant, reliable, and so on. Now, selection, on what basis? We said that select what? An appropriate accounting policy. Select an appropriate accounting policy. Select an appropriate accounting policy. So select what? Uh, appropriate, appropriate accounting policy. Not just any policy at all, just the appropriate one. Just appropriate accounting policy to ensure that the financial statement that we have prepared one comply with the IFRS. So here we are just saying that the policy must be appropriate in the sense that A, it complies or it complies with the IFRS, International Accounting Standard that we have. So any policy that you select, make sure that it's in line with the IFRS. It's in line with the IFRS. That is the appropriate accounting policy. Okay. B, to ensure that the financial statement is what one, reliable, reliable. Two, relevant, relevant. Three, faithfully represented. So faithfully represented, faithfully represented. Good. So these are the basis for selecting what and applying accounting policy. So when examiner asks you that, on what base can entity select an accounting policy, just the examiner that you should relax. According to IS8, he said that we should select a policy which is what first appropriate as a first in a sense that it comply with the requirement of the IFRS because for instance if you select LIFO for your inventory valuation no this does not comply with what the IES2 or the IFRS so this will not be an appropriate policy for your organization. This is a typical example. LIFO is not a requirement of an IFRS. So if you select it, uh, it does not comply. Good, that is it. So that note, we are done with the first section. Can we move on to the summary point? We are still looking at the summary point. We are still looking at the summary point. Good. Now, the next section will be this. IS8 talks about four items. Second item is change in accounting policy. So a change in accounting policy. Please, no shortcut in exam. In accounting policy. Good. Change in accounting policy. That is all. So that's the second item that stated in IAS 8 that you should understand. I am providing a summary. Good. An assumption that you've gone through the full lecture video that explain this in a detailed manner. So, take notes. 
Now, ISH is saying this. The accounting policy once selected and applied must be kept the same from time to time to enable what? Comparability. Yes. We are saying that the policy that you've selected, please don't change it. Just be consistent. That's the first sentence of the third examiner. The accounting policy once selected and applied must be kept what? The same from time to time to enable what? Comparability. So 2015 policy, 2016, 2017 going, must be kept the same from time to time. That is the general rule. The general rule says that the accounting policy once selected must be kept the same. Good. I hope you remember this very point. This is the second time. Because we quote the same point under the conceptual framework, under the comparability. We said that to enable comparability, there must be what consistency. Or uh, uniformity in the accounting policy. Good. So basically, that is it. <laughs> now, unless, unless we are going to give a condition, you know, sometimes there's a need for you to change your accounting policy. The standard allows that. But the standard gives only two conditions in which you can change your accounting policy. So two conditions. So two conditions. So before you can change your accounting policy, make sure that these two conditions are in place before you can what, change the accounting policy. Great. Right. Now, what are the conditions? Now, you can only change your accounting policy one if it is required by IFRS. So required. Required by an IFRS. Mm, thank you. Or required by just IFRS. That's all. Maybe a standard. Uh, thank you. There has been a changes in the mm. IAS. So the new one, the new one gives a new treatment. For instance, before IAS 23 came in place, all borrowing costs, all borrowing costs were what? Expensed. Now, after IAS 23, some of the borrowing costs are capitalized. So, now we have changed what the policy regards to what recognition of what borrowing costs. So therefore, but this capitalization is required by what an IFRS. So in short, make sure that the new policy is being permitted by what an IFRS. That's all. Summary two. Summary two. The change. The change will result in a reliable and more relevant presentation. That's all. The change results what more reliable and relevant presentation. So result in more reliable and relevant presentation. That's all. Relevant presentation. So aside these two reasons, you can't change your policy. Just maintain it. That is all. So that is the end of the game. Now let's look at this. What constitutes a change in accounting policy? What constitutes a change in accounting policy? Great. Now, what constitutes a change in accounting policy? A change in accounting policy occurs when there's a change in one. There's a change in one recognition. So take notes.
When I say change in what? Presentation. Finally, when they say change in what? Measurement. This is a change in accounting policy. Great. If one is there. So in summary, that is it. Recognition simple means the item was formally recorded as an asset, but now it's a what? An expense or vice versa in that order. Presentation. Formally, the item was presented, look at depreciation. It was presented under what? Operating expenses. But now then they say no, they are going to present it under what? Cost of sales. So that is a presentation. Then finally, measurement. Inventory. Formally, you are using what? FIFO. Now you want to use what? Weighted average cost method or vice versa. Like you can also change from where? You can also change from weighted average to the FIFO in that order. Great. If you change from weighted average to FIFO and FIFO to weighted average, that's a change in accounting policy. So please and please again, check the question very well. If you see that they are moving from asset to expense, expense to assets, it's a policy. If they are changing the classification, it's a policy. FIFO, weighted average, that's all. So I'm done. Now let's go to the accounting treatment of a change accounting policy. Then that is all. We start solving our questions. Let me what is the accounting treatment of a chain accounting policy? Now the treatment is this. We apply the new policy as if it has always been there. So we have a term that we call it, that the change must be applied what? The accounting treatment of the new policy. We said that it must be applied retrospectively. So we need what you call retrospective application or the chain must be applied retrospectively or retrospective application. Now retrospective simple means, don't worry, I charge the open balance of the retained earnings. I charge the open balance of the retain earnings that is all so that's the first treatment treatment number two then apply apply the examiner apply the new policy apply the new policy in the current and the next period does apply the new policy in the current and the next period financial statement. That is all. So these are county treatments of changing accounting policy. I am done with changing accounting policy. Now can I move on to the third item? We said that there are four. We are just providing summary, summary, summary. When we start solving the question, they will pop up. All of this will pop up again in question solving form. So kindly be with us when we are solving the questions. Okay, so let's see. The next item on the list is changing accounting estimates. Kindly use the full lecture to get the meaning of accounting estimate. So changing accounting estimate. So number three, change in accounting word estimate. 
Okay. Now, accounting estimates, uh, let me just go straight forward. The accounting treatment is that we apply the change perspective all the way. So first, hmm. So accounting treatment of change in accounting estimate. That one, you apply the change prospectively. Prospectively. So we call it prospectively or prospective application. It means that do not adjust the open balance of the retained earnings, don't. Instead, apply the change in the current year onwards. So apply the change, apply the change or the new policy. No, I won't say new policy. The new estimate, apply the new estimate in where? In the current year onwards, in the current year onwards. That's all. In the current year onwards. So that is how we deal with what change in accounting estimate. Please and um, please again. You should know that this change is a policy or is an estimate because the examiner will not inform you. Now you know what constitutes change in accounting policy. So you should take note. For instance, estimate is like depreciation method. If they change from straight line to reducing balance, it's an estimate. Now, the decision to depreciate asset, it's a policy, but the method of depreciation is an estimate. Take it. Now, have you seen depreciation? It's equals to cost minus square value or residual value all divided by number of years, right? When they change the method itself, it's a policy. When they change the useful life, it's a policy. When they change the square value, right? Let me start all over again. We are saying that depreciation, maybe straight line, depreciation is equal to cost minus residual value all divided by number of years. Everything over here is an estimate. If they change any figure here, it's an estimate. They change any figure there is what? An estimate. So when they change this, it's an estimate. So when they change this one, it's an estimate. When they change the method itself, it's what? Estimate. When they change the star value, it's what? Estimate. But they can't change the cost. The cost is actual. The cost of the asset, that one is actual, not estimate. So that is all. And then let's move on to the last aspect. Last aspect. That's all for IS8. Then number four is prior period errors. How do you correct prior period errors? That is all. That is the next one. Now the errors to you correct the error as if the error has never occurred or never occurred. So correct it as if that's never occurred in our books. So that is how we correct the error. So that one also required what you call a retrospective publication. Retrospective application. So that one you adjust. Retrospective application simple means our retrospective reinstatement. We have to adjust the open balance of the retained earnings. Adjust the open balance of what? The retained earnings. That is all. If the error affects the current year, you have to adjust the current year financial statement. That is all. So that is how we correct what a prior period error. That is all. So we are done. Now let's go to the question solving. 
and I have provided this in the material. The summary of it, I provided it in the material. Great. Good. This. Now, when you go to the almost latter part, can you let this table be part of you? Summary of IAS 8. Changes in accounting policy. How do you account for it? What goes to the PNL? What goes to the statement of changes in equity? That is the adjustment to what the open balance of the retained earnings. That is all. So can we make sure that this table part for you? Now let's go to our first question. The first question goes like this: A limited. A limited company has been valuing its closing inventory under the weighted average cost method. In 2013, management decided to change its accounting policy relating to the valuation of inventories to first in, first out, that is FIFO method. Since it was considered to more accurately reflect the usage and flow of inventory, in the economic cycle. Required, is the change in accounting policy justified? Justify means, does it satisfy the conditions? There are two conditions. If any of them is there, you can go ahead and change your, your accounting policy. Great. So let me throw this question back to you for you to look at it for me. Now, uh, the solution will be like this. Yes, the change is what justified since, since it will result what more reliable and accurate presentation or relevant presentation of the transactions and event so they said that they are changing it since it was considered to more accurately reflect the usage and flow of inventory in the economic cycle. So it, it will result what a reliable and what relevant presentation. So therefore, the change is what justified. That is all. So they can go ahead and change the policy. You know, the conditions are true, right? Before any policy, to be changed one it must be what permitted by an ifrs or the change must result what more reliable and relevant presentation so here they've gotten the second one correct so you can change now let's go to the next question Illustration two. In 2013, Bright Light Limited changed its accounting policy relating to valuation of inventories. Before 2013, the inventories were valued under weighted average cost method. In 2013, the method was changed to first in, first out method because it was considered to more accurately reflect the usage and flow of inventories in the economic cycle. The impact of, on the inventory valuation was determined to be December 31st, 2011, an increase to 10,000. December 2012, increase to 15,000. And December 2013, the current year, it is also increased to 20,000. Okay. The income statement prior to, to the adjustment are, don't forget that we will not treat the new policy or we will not correct the error. Don't forget that the income statement that we will give it to you is before the adjustment. It has been prepared using what? The old policy. So take note. 
we will not look uh, or account for the new one and still tell you that's not a question. So expect them, they've not accounted for it. In the worst case scenario, in the worst case scenario, we can also ask you, they, will, they have already accounted for it, but in a wrong manner, and we can ask you to do the right thing. So, so in that case, you have to reverse all what they've done and do everything new. That is all. So don't expect the examiner to change your policy and prepare income statement with the new policy while there's no errors, no. So this is the new policy. The retained earnings as at January 2001, so January 2012 is 300,000. That is all. Now I'll give you only three steps. Only three steps if you are solving IAS 8. Step one, identify the change and the affected area. So step one, the change. And what? Affected area. Step two, the impact, very important. Oh, the change has caused the profit to be overstated and understated. So that will know. They are saying that determine the impact. Will it cause the profit to be overstated or understated or over statement of the expense? Then finally, the accounting treatment. That's all. So anytime you are solving accounting policy, first know the change and affected area. Oh, it will affect cost of sales and this section, gross profit, and any other item that depend on gross profit will also be affected. That is all. Then number two, tell us the impact. What will be the impact? Number three, what is the accounting treatment? That is all. So that's how we're going to use to solve this question. We've gone through this question. So this question, it's a change. We should identify the change. They've changed their inventory valuation from where? Weighted average to FIFO. Good. That is the change. What is the affected area? Okay, so if they change policy on inventory, it will affect inventory. And any item that affects inventory, indirectly affect what cost of sales that is all so here i'll tell the examiner that they've changed accounting policy regards to what inventory so it will affect so it will affect what inventory and finally affect what cost of sales so it tells me that the cost of sales given to me in the question automatically is wrong Automatically, that cost of sales figure is wrong. Automatically, it's wrong because I know that we are affected. It, and any other item that depends on cost of sales is also automatically what, wrong. Why? Because if, if the cost of sales is wrong, gross profit, forget it. Net profit, forget it. Good. So that is it. Second step. I have to identify if change evaluation. So the question is, will it the impact? That's where it's a bit difficult, but let's look at this. Now they say it does increase the inventory to 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. Now let me break these sections down very well for you to get it on the board. On the board. And can we get it here? Now let's assume that when we use the old method, the weighted average cost old, or the old policy, new policy, 
a fearful or fearful in 2010, 2011, but it is not 2010. We started from where? It's from 2011, 12, and then 13 goes. Start from 2011, 12, and what 13. Let's just assume using these figures. A weighted average is giving us pi. D4 is giving us 10. Weighted average is giving us 10. T4 is giving us 15. Weighted average is giving us 15. T4 is giving us 20. Now, this is the impact. However, the examiner could just tell us the impact or give us this for us to determine the impact by ourselves. So what's the impact? So this is the impact. Now, if the old policy, we are using weighted average cost method, the event figure is 5 million or 5,000. So let me add a three zero so you are in thousands you are in thousands but c4 the new one is giving us thousands so that means here there will be an increase of inventory by five according to the new policy inventory must gone up by what five that is the impact okay 2012 the new policy old policy mm, inventory must also go up by what five now the last one 15 and 20. That means inventory must also go about five. Good. This is the impact. So in short, the inventory figure must be increased by 5,000 each year. That's all. That's the impact. Identify it. Now, when you are going to increase the producing inventory, what effect will it be on the cost of sales? Another explanation to this will be as follows. Now, if you use this in the calculation, that's one thing that we have to take note. If you use the old policy in arriving at the cost of sales, but if they should have used the new policy, that is what's expected of them, then they'll, they'll get inventory of 10, not the five that they have used. So therefore, we have to now perform a magic that the five that they've used, you have to now top it up by five so that now you can give us what well, the new policy of 10, top it up by five, get 15, and in that order. So in short, it, it also means that the inventory was understated. It also means there's a first meaning, second meaning. Inventory was understated uh, by 5,000 each year. That's the meaning. Inventory was understated by 5,000. Now, when you understate inventory, what happens to your cost of sales? Cost of sales goes high, right? Then what happens to your gross profits? So if you want to correct it. So because the inventory figure was short, the inventory figure was small than actual, what happened to cost of sales? You know, closing inventory we subtract, right? So little has been subtracted. So that means the cost of sales is what? has been overstated cost of sales has been overstated and if you have overstated the cost of sales that means your gross profit has been understated that's all so the cost of sales has been what overstated so what do we do we reduce it so you have to reduce by that amount so in short this figure should be subtracted from the cost of sales for each year. So this figure should be subtracted from the cost of sales each year. Great.
So 5,000 should be subtracted from the cost of sales because they've already subtracted five as a closing inventory for 2011, 10 for 2012, 15 for 2015. But it's supposed to be 10. So we have to now subtract all the different. Now it's supposed to be 15. So you have to subtract five more. So in short, we have to subtract 5,000 from each year's cost of sales. And that is all for the income statement. So for the income statement, this cost of sales should go down by 5,000. This cost of sales should also go down by what? 5,000, and then we are done. Any other item which does not depend on cost of sales remain the same. Any other item which does not depend on cost of sales remain the same because there's no change. So just copy any item. So that's revenue remain the same. Admin remain the same. Sell and distribution remain the same. That's all. So let's look at that. Let's provide solution to this particular question. So in short, we start with the requirement. In fact, this particular question, there was no requirement. Just like for illustration. So the requirement goes like this, required. Prepared income statement and changes in equity into bracket return and in column only for Bright Light Limited in 2013 and 2012 as well comparative. That will be the requirement. Okay, so we have prepared the income statement. I'll do it here. So first, the name of the company. Bright Light Limited. I'll tell the examiner, income statement for the year ended. This 2013, current year, and 2012, right here, comparative. Now, for accounting policy, you need comparative information. And for errors too, yes, you need comparative information. But for estimate, you don't need comparative information. Take note. Okay. So I'll start sales revenue. Nothing affected sales, so I just record it as it is now. Your currency. So sales revenue is 250 and 200. So 250,000 and 200. Then what about the cost of sales? Cost of sales. Show working and deduct 5,000 from each. So 2013, the cost of sales is 100,000. If I take 5,000, I'll get what? 95,000. And then the cost of sales for show working that into bracket hundred thousand minus five thousand that give us ninety five thousand. Again, eighty thousand minus five thousand that give us seventy five thousand. So that is the cost of sales. Okay, so what to be the gross profit? What to be the gross profit? One hundred and fifty five thousand. And this is what? One hundred and twenty five thousand, right? Okay. Then the expenses, admin and distribution, nothing affect that. So just have to copy them from the question directly. So from the question, admin is 6050 and 2515. 
60-50 and 25-15. So 60-50, uh -huh. and 25-15. Twenty-five, fifteen. Good. Put them in a bracket. That suggests that we are subtracting. That suggests that we are subtracting. What is the net profit? And that is the end of the game. Net profit happen to be seventy thousand. Hmm. So 70,000 against 60,000, yes, I think that. So that is all. So anytime there's a change in accounting policy, in the current year, just prepare the current year financial statement using what the new policy. Please and please again, this is what you call comparative information. The previous year's own is comparative, why? They've already published 2012 financial statement. If we already publish it. So what we are doing, we are just looking at the effect. If this policy should have been 2012, what should be the financial statement? That's all for comparison purposes. Now let's go and do the changes in equity into bracket the retained earnings only. So I will do that one here for you. Okay, so let's do the changes in equity here into bracket retain and in column only. As usual, like the examiner that we are preparing account for who? Bright Light Limited. So Bright Light Limited. Bright Light Limited. So statement of changes in equity, right? Statement of changes in equity. Please, tell the examiner that in bracket, retain earnings only. Retain earnings column only. You know, changes in equity have a lot of sub details, right? We are interested in the retained earnings only. We are interested in the retain and is only. Now let's start. I'll provide an alternative. Like you select any method that you want. Changes in equity. So changes in equity. Changes in equity. Okay, so change is everything. Now let's see how best we can look at this. Into bracket retain and it's only a retain and column. Now, when you go to the question, they will give you open balance of the retain and it's the year that they will give it to you. That's where we have to start from most often. So the retain and it's I start January 2001, 2012, right? January 1st, 2012 is what? 300,000. So that's the open balance. By start at what? It starts at, so 2012. So say 1st of what? January 2012. My currency is here. They say it's 300,000. So let's put 300,000 here. Now, this is where post a little challenge. So I want you to get this section very clear for me, because this section pose a little challenge. The challenge is that, have you seen, let's do a normal line. When did they change the policy? They changed the accounting policy in 2013, financial year. It's 2012 financial year. And it's 2011 financial year. 
Now the question is this. Now, from the beginning of that financial year onwards, what will be this open balance? They have given it to us as at what? 5th January 2012, right? Okay. Let me extend the normal line because that doesn't look nice. Let me see. Uh -huh, this one is a bit okay. This is where they changed their mind, 2013 December. This is 2012 financial statement. This is 2011 hours. Now, it's 2010. The open balance given to us is as at first. So now it means that we should stand at 2012 and strike backwards. So stand at 2012. So now adjust the open balance of the retained earning. That's the meaning of what retrospective application. Bring the open balance of the retained earnings and adjust it. These are retained earnings, but it was as at first day of January 2012. So first January 2012. So it means that we have to select. Meanwhile, we have to select the impact from that day. So indirectly, first. This is the whole of 2012 financial year. January is somewhere here. So select from here going. Perfect. So therefore, here the increase was five. The new policy increased the inventory by 5,000. Another increase by five. And finally, another increase by five. So now tell me, from this open balance up to the previous years, what will be the impact? It's only one, five, right? So the impact is only five. So I have to only adjust this guy by five. But however, if the open balance was, let's say here, then I have to adjust what one, two. That is it. So we are done. So in short, I just have to tell the examiner that change in accounting policy and to have an inventory valuation and put the 5,000 here. Here, are you adding or you are subtracting? Look at the effect on profit. First, we said that the closing inventory was understated. If closing inventory is understated, cost of sales will be what? Overstated. Now, cost of sales was overstated. If cost of sales is overstated, what happened to your profit? Your profit will be understated. So let's top up. This is cumulative profit. So the profit has been what? Understated. So let's add. We are topping it up to offset the understatement. So you get 305,000. So therefore, this becomes what you call restated open balance. Restated what? Open balance that is it restated open balance we now add the right profit to it so 2012 was the profit after tax a right one was the right profit 2012 is 60,000 so let me add 60,000 to it i get something like 365,000 right and that is the closing balance. So balance carry down. This is the balance draw down. That is it. We are now with 2012. We move on to 2013. So 1st January 2013. Balance draw down will be 65,000. Agreed. Then add the profit after tax to rates. Antipax. Antipax happened to be 70,000, right? Okay.
to add the profits after tax, the right profit, 70,000 to it. It will always give us 435,000, right? So 435,000. And that is the closing balance. So balance carry down. We are done with this. That is the balance. Now I want to present an alternative. I'll do that one here. So let me take this section off and do the alternative presentation. Alternative presentation. I want to do an alternative to so select one. And I like it this way. This one is a vertical approach. So I also do like this. So now I to start like this. Bright Light Limited. Changes in equity, right? The changes in equity. Into bracket, retain earnings only. First, I write 2013. 2012 into bracket comparative and make my open balance balance brought down the two does that the open balance for 2012 is what 300,000 if the open balance is 300,000 ask yourself what is a wrong profit in 2012 so that we can get open balance for 2013 so let's go to the question. The wrong profit for 2012 is 55,000. Now, if the retain open balance of the retained earnings for 2012 is 300, then the closing balance will be plus the 55,000. So that will give us 355,000. Then if it is a closing, as of 2012, then it will be open for 2013. So 2013, I just have to add 55 plus 300 and plus 300,000. So therefore, here will be what? 355,000. That is it. 355,000. That is the wrong profit. Okay, now let's um correct this or adjust this now i write a change in accounting policy the effects now tell me from 2013 going down and from 2012 going down from 2013 how many there will be another five five 2011 to there will be another one five so that means from 2013 going this is a current one we stand here going that will be 10 right five and five making 10 from that of 2012 alone is five we know this to be five thousand right good we know this to be five thousand so from 2013 going backwards it's also a uh, 10 that is all. So if it is 10, so here will be 10,000. 10,000. So sum it up. We are adding. Why are we adding? Because this new policy will increase what inventory. And when inventory increases, profit also increases. When a closing inventory increases, it increases profits. Yes. Call is one restated what open balance. Here is 365,000. Here is 35,000. Agreed. Restated what? Open balance. Restated open balance. 365,000. 5,000. Then what do you do again? Add the correct profit to it. What is the correct profit? 2013 happened to be 70,000. This one happened to be 60,000. So at the end of the day, 
a closing balance will be sum this one up 365,000 sum this one up 435,000 that is the end of the game any of them the answer correct so this is the 435 that we have here we had 365 this is the 365 and if you're closing here it might be open here the continuation follows if you do it well you should balance nicely like this on that note we are done with the very first question so i'll move on to the next one and the next one good i have two more questions to solve plus the exam pass questions good now let's move on to illustration three illustration three Brady trading. Brady trading. Illustration three. Now let's go. In fact, now I'm doing no requirement. If you go to the tutorial question, you can just copy the requirement there. The requirement go like this: prepare a statement of profit or loss, and statement of changes in equity into bracket retain earnings column only for the current year and the previous year's comparative. If you see the word comparative in the question, then it tells you that there's a change in accounting policy or there's what? A prior period what? Error. Good. And let's go to the main solution. So the main question. Illustration three. I've read the requirement, even though it wasn't written here. I think the same requirement. It says that while carrying out the audit of Brady Trading Limited for 2013, it was noticed that the depreciation on property, plants, and equipment for 2012 was incorrectly recorded in the books of account at 30,000 instead of 50,000. Mm. So this one is an error. Just that it was committed last year, but discovered this year. So we call it what? Prior period error or previous errors discovered in this year's statement, which is IS what? Eight. How do you correct it? Correct the error as if the error had never had in our books. That's all. Now the extract from the income statement for the years ended December 31st, 2013 and 2012 before correction of this error is as follows. So as usual, like I, I inform you, we will not correct the error for you. That's not a question. We will still prepare the old financial statement and give it to you without the correction of the error. So you have to now correct it. The financial statement is also prepared as follows. Now, if you go the down there, they've given us retained earnings. The retained earnings for 2013 and 12 before the correction of the error are as follows. All of them are there. Now, take note that this question, we could have just stated the 50,000, that's all. The rest are, we might not do it in exams for you. We will not do this, all this calculation. No, 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 no. Just the 50,000. Let me show you something. Have you seen the question that we just solved? The exam not give us just this open balance. Just this open balance. Then we've had this. We calculated this by ourselves. That's what we've done in this question. So take note that the exam not might not do that. And let's continue with the question. So that's all. Now, Brady Trading Limited pay income tax at what twenty percent for both years. I'll treat tax when I get there. Now, what we do is this: for errors two, we have to also go through the same three procedures. The same. Identify the error. 
and then the affected area. Identify what the error and the affected area. Identify the error and the affected area. Identify the error and the affected area. So step one, identify the error and what affected area. Number two, the impact. Number three, the correction. That is all for error. Three steps, get it done. Any other item that will not be affected, just carry it as it is and bring it in. We call it three marks. So here yeah, I'll start. Ready trading. So ready trading. And the income statement. For the year ended, first 2013 and 2012. Normally, I, write, I like writing comparative. It's for comparison purposes. It's for comparison purposes. Don't forget your currency. Now, what is the error? Get yeah, a mistake. Is that the depreciation is supposed to be fifty thousand in the books, but they've recorded as what thirty. So the error is that. So step one, identify the error. The error is that depreciation as what understated by what twenty thousand. What is the impact? It will increase. It will increase the net profit. That's all. How do you correct it? Add it back to the depreciation and then subtract it from the box. So now let's go and copy all the other items. So it means that in this question, gross profit will not be affected. General admin will not be affected. Selling distribution will not be affected. Depreciation, only depreciation that will be affected, and then the net income before tax. So let's see. Gross profit. So let's record all. So you have to write all those that will not be affected. So the gross profit happened to be 400. So let me just copy those that will not be affected on the board. So gross profit. That'll be 400, right? First profit happened to be 400,000 and 350,000. 350,000. Then um, general admin. General admin happened to be 80,000. And then 90,000. And then send distribution is 50, 20. Seven and distribution will be 50,000. And 20,000. Now let's go to the board. I've copied them. Then you go to your almighty depreciation. What are the error? So here will be 50,000. Here too must also be 50,000. Don't forget to add into bracket 30,000. So as the error of what? 20,000 that they refuse to add. That is all. It's not done anything. Can you get me the net profit before tax? So what is a profit before tax? Before tax. 400 minus 80, 320 minus 100, 220, right? 
Mm. So in fact, it means that nothing affected 2013. So 2013 just copy because the error occurred when last year. The error does not affect the current year. So therefore, the current year financial statement is called mistake free. Does not contain any mistake. Then that of uh, that of this one to give us three fifty that three hundred two ten that's one ninety. If my calculator will be correct, one ninety right? Perfect. Okay. Now these two. Let's go and calculate the tax, please and please again. Look at how I'm calculating the tax. The third question we are going to solve, that one you will do it. And the tax you calculate it. Can we look at it very well for me? When I'm done as usual, I'll also provide a shortcut for you. Just that a shortcut is dangerous because you have a, a particular challenge in some extreme case, you cannot use the shortcut. But what I'm going to do, whether the extreme case or not, we can still use what the shortcut. Okay, now let's see. So workings. So let's do the workings here. I'm doing workings. Number one about tax, income tax. Income tax. All what I have to do is this. All what I have to do is this. Just an examiner. That I have 2013 current and 2012. Pair the question, what's the income tax? Pair question. So the income tax over there was 44, right? So 44,000. Is that so? Let's pick it before. I copy wrongly. So let's go to the question. For the income tax is 44.42. Wow, 44.42. So this is 44,000. And this is 42,000. Then what happened again? And what happened again? Now, what you are going to do is a critical section. What is the error? So the effect of the effect on tax. That's tax. So third examiner that uh, error into bracket tax effects. Now, what was the error? In 2012, the error was that depreciation has been understated by 20,000. Depreciation was understated by 20,000. The decision was understood by 20,000. Now, what will be the tax effect? If the depreciation has gone down by 20, that means the expenses has also gone down by 20. What happened to their profit? Profit has gone up. So let me write profit here. Profit has gone up hugely by 20,000. Now, Profit and tax are twins. They are two. They are close. All of them move toward the same direction. When your profit is high, the tax authority will also tax you at high. If your profit is low, the tax will also be low. So because of this expense, our profit has gone up and that's exposed us to tax. 
we make a huge provision of tax. So therefore, our tax also was gone up. So therefore, to correct it, we have to also reduce the tax. The tax has gone up. So we have to what, reduce our tax to correct it. So tax must be reduced. That is all. So in short, we have to reduce this. So open the bracket. Tell the examiner that is twenty thousand times the tax rate. The tax rate is what twenty percent. So twenty thousand by twenty percent will give us. So twenty thousand by twenty percent. That is the tax rate. And that will give us something like four, right? That means you have to subtract four thousand from it. Now for two thousand and thirteen, there was nothing wrong, so therefore no tax effect. So at the end of the day, what is the right income tax? Here was to be forty-four thousand. Here must be thirty-eight. Why thirty-eight? It must be thirty-eight because. 42,000 minus 4,000 should give us what? 38. So I don't day, when I come back to my financial statement and I write income tax, I bring them here. Here is 44,000. Here is 38,000. Now, I hope you get a long approach. Is a long approach and it's work for all questions, irrespective of how the question is being structured. Irrespective. Now let's look at a shortcut approach. Let's look at a shortcut approach. Let's look at a shortcut approach. Okay, with well, a shortcut approach, just go to the question and test something. So let's pick our, our calculators. Okay, go to the question. Let's test and see whether this income tax over here, it was proportional to the profit. What's the tax rate? 20%, right? Now everybody pick your calculator, 20%. Find 20% on the profit before tax for each year and see whether it will be the same as what the whether it will be the same as the one stated there so 20% 20 on 220, that's 44. 20% 20 on 210, that's 42. Confirmed. Everybody confirm. Everybody confirm. Everybody confirm. Okay. So you realize that it's the same, right? Once it's the same, once it's confirmed, and it's the same, you are free to now, if you can do it here. So once you confirm it's the same, just pick your calculator. Multiply this one by 20%, you get this. Multiply 190 by 20%, you must also get the same answer as 38. So 190 by 20%, that's 38, right? I'll be getting the same answer as 38, that is it. So shortcut. Then this shortcut, sorry, this shortcut 
only works if when you multiply they are the same if you multiply they are not the same it cannot work like the next question that we are going to solve our next question we are going to solve we we'll move to the section where the tax rate you won't get the same so like i've seen the gradual process we started a question without a tax now we can include the tax where they are the same and then now we finally move on to where they are not the same okay so what's the profit after tax antipart 220 minus 44 profit after tax antipart Okay, so that will give us 176,000 and 152,000. Okay, so we are done with the income statement. Just get it that I need to locate where it will affect. In exams, I'll not give free items like that, no. To take notes. Okay, let's go to the changes in equity into bracket retain earnings column only. Because we said that where there was a previous errors, we have to adjust the open balance of the retained earnings. That's what we mean by what? Retrospective application. Retrospective application means just adjust what the open balance of the retained earnings. So this is how I will solve this. I'll not go by the long approach where I use the vertical section. I'll go by the alternative one I provided. Yes. So look at how I'll, I'll solve this. Again, ready trading. The name of the company is very important. Ready trading. Changes in equity. Changes in equity. Then I'll have current year 2013. Let me write it here. I'll have 2012 comparative. Comparative. 2012 is what? Comparative. 2012 is comparative. Okay. Then I'll start open balance. Balance brought down. Let's go and pick the retained earnings. Yeah, the change in equity is the retained earnings column only. I'm begging you. Is a retained earnings column only. So let's go to the question and go and pick the open balances. The open balance for 2013 is what? Open balance for 2012 is 50,000. And an open balance for 2013 is what? 218. No. So 5218, right? 218,000. Now, I want everyone here. I'm going to ask a question. The person who was called correct will smile. Good. And I've assumed that I can't drink caca for the night. This, this is the question. Have you seen these two retained earnings here? The 50,000, which is in 2012, open balance. The 218,000, which is the 2013. Which of this contains the error? Tell me, which of these two figures, is it 2012 or 2013, contains the error? OK, so um, in fact, the one that contains the profit is two one, contains the error is 218,000. That's the 2013. So the one that contains the error, the profit that contains the error is 2013's own. So it's 2013. It's 2013 on um, that contains the error. It's 2013. 
Why 2013? In 2013, the profit reported was 218, right? That's the open balance. Now let's explain why in the 2013. I will not explain with just mere words. I will explain with figures. Now, let's assume this 2013 and 2012. It starts with the open balance. It was 15. Now this 50,000 is the closing balance for 2011. And there's no mistake in 2011 financial statement. Is there any mistake? No, there's no mistake in 2011. So if there's no mistake in 2011, then any balance brought forward from that period is also good, no mistake. So this one, no error. So the open balance, this 50,000, no error. But what happened is this, they added the wrong profit. So let's go to the question. They added what? The wrong profit. Have you seen? Uh huh, good. The wrong profit that they had here, which contains the error. Let's go up. The error occurred in 2012. Instead of this 50,000, they make it 20. Sorry, they make it um, 30,000. Now, they had a wrong profit of what? 168,000. So, therefore, that profit has been added to the correct open balance to get wrong closing balance. And wrong closing balance has been posted to the next year as the open balance. So as a result of this, this open balance contains the error. That is all. So they had 168. They added, and now they get what? Wrong profits of 218 as the closing balance and we can't open balance here. So the mistake was inside this and has been added, pass on the mistake. So take note of this. Okay, so now, whatever the mistake is, let's correct it. The mistake is in this guy's form. So error, so let's correct it. Into bracket, find the net of tax. And if you get that hit, the change in equity is net of what tax. And if you got that hit, the change in equity is what net of tax. So find 20,000 times 80%. Why 80? Because the tax rate is what is 20%. So net of tax is what 80. So 20,000 times. 80%. That will give us 16,000, right? Okay. So this is 16,000. Now, 16,000, are we adding or we are subtracting? It's like depreciation that they forgot to add. So we have to now subtract it from the books. Here will be dash, no error. So this is what we call restated open balance. Re Stated open word balance. So I give us two zero two thousand. Agreed. Then finally, this give us still fifty thousand. There's no error here. Then finally, you add a correct profit to it. Correct profit. Profit that we have calculated. This correct profit to add. Profit of the tax. So here's one seventy six thousand. And 152,000. So here will be 152,000. Let's add them and get a closing balance. So balance carry down. So here will be 202,000. Add this to this. They get 378,000 as the final section. And then we are done with the game. So this is how it will be. Always, closing balance here must appear here as well. Open balance, the restricted balance. A good one. Great. So that is the end of the game. So now notes, we will 
end here, but before we go, I've sent some questions to your mail or page. Kindly kindly let me uh-huh good so this is a question i sent it to you can you try that for me if you get a solution can they send it to me okay so that is it i said that we still go through the remaining questions Okay, so to go over this, we said that the just bring the open balances. Bring the open balances. Ask yourself which of the open balance contains the error. It says the what the current here because it has been passed on through the open balance. It has been passed on. So affect the error. It was a depreciation that they forgot to what record or add it. Depreciation was understated by 20,000. So find the net of tax. Just pick the 20,000 and subtract the tax from it. So the tax rate is 20%. By 20,000, give us 4,000. So 20,000 minus 4,000 is for 16,000. Now, depreciation, this is cumulated profit and it's depreciation. So the, you have to subtract from it to give you the restated open balance. Just copy this and then add it again. Then after you get a restated open balance, then what you do is you now add the right profit to it, the profit after tax, you add it to it. At the end of the day, you get a closing balance and then that is the end of the game. Basically, this is how you go to, to solve this. So kindly try that question that I sent to you together with these questions if everybody try it why not we have to meet and solve them especially the one i sent to you please these tutorial questions they are questions that are very good for your health can you try this tutorial question question one is for you and i think one of the videos contain the solution one of the videos on IS8 contains the solution for question one. So question one has been solved. Question two, also solved. Question three, it's not solved. Please, question three is going for $50. If you solve it correctly, send it to our mail for $50. That's for question three, fifty dollars. I and I, I. If you get correct, it's going for fifty dollars. Question four is your exam pass question, November twenty eighteen. So that one, I need a solution. So please, question one and four, try them. That is all. Question one and four. So question four is your exam pass question. Uh, yes. Can you try them? If you're able to go through these questions, I think you are free to go. So therefore, there are only three questions outstanding. Question one and question four, plus the one that is just sent to you. The one I just sent on a page. Or oh, this particular one, let me project it again. Let me project it again. Yes, this particular one, during 2007, Global Co. Can you solve this one for me? I am begging you. So this, so therefore, three questions so far. Try them and present the solution. Great. If you do have any question, kindly ask. If no, then this is how far the good Lord bring us. We will meet again. In our next section, we are doing IES 10 and IES 12. 
All of them are in the material. All of them are in the material. So you can see that the next page is on what? IS 10, event after reporting period. The right from there, IS 12, continue. IS 12, and that's the end of the first set. So on ne next meeting, on next lecture video, we are going to solve questions. As usual, kindly go through the videos from the previous lectures to grab the concept before we meet in class to solve questions like how we look at today's own. Okay, so thank you very much for coming and for watching as well.